Welcome everybody to um, this little session about um, detecting leaks with instruments. And uh, actually this um, is the second part of a session um, which I previously recorded and which started out sort of as a Q&A and it all began over on the fantastic iOS developers group on Facebook. I understand that um, there are many iOS developers out there who are kind of a little bit skeptical when it comes to Facebook. However, if you are a Facebook member, I highly recommend to check out the iOS developers group. Just do a search for iOS developers and you should easily find it. And we've got some great folks over there. It's very active and it has helped me a lot. And I'd, I'd like to mention John Chaplin, who um, can, uh, works for Fusion in Australia, and he actually um, was involved in, in the discussion heavily and uh, finally pointed out um, the fact that kind of um, that kind of I want to illustrate in the screencast. So a great shout out and thank you to John over on the iOS developers group. Well, let's start. Um, I've created a very basic view-based application. It's not a production application. I um, intentionally created it to illustrate um, the the parts of, um, of the screencast. Um, what it does, it has two buttons and a UI image view. And when you push this first button, we create 1000 UI images and add each of it to an NS mutable array. The second button simply pulls the object at index zero and displays it here in the UI image view to sort of reconfirm that those objects actually got created successfully and that they end up being in that NS mutable array. Now, in this method, in this action hooked to that first button, here we kind of lazy create and initialize that array, which is a retained um, property on the view controller. And in this for loop, we do create a temporary UI image object stored in this underscore image pointer. And then we add it to the NS mutable array. And now actually this is where we intentionally create a leak. So in your production code, you were supposed to do like image release. Pretty simple, you alloc and init in this line, which means you are responsible to balance the retain count when you add the temporary image object to the NS mutable array the retain count is increased as the NS mutable array um, indicates ownership and that means we should release an object which we have allocated but we don't do that we on purpose create a memory leak here so um, now let's fire this app up and um, we do bring it up in instruments for profiling and we do take the leaks instrument let's bring it in here a little bit so and let's see what happens so what we do see here is the application has been launched and instruments sure enough shows us some initial allocation and that usually is the app delegate and the view hierarchy getting set up and once we hit this button we create those 1000 ui image objects and we can clearly see those get allocated now if we switch over to the leaks instrument which we have configured to take a snapshot every 10 seconds automatically interestingly enough there's no leak but hey wait in our code we clearly have a leak we allocate those objects, but we do not release them. So why doesn't instruments show us that leak? Well, let's maybe just add 1000 additional objects. Now having created 2000 leaking objects and maybe we manually do a snapshot, no leaks. Well, just to, to see whether everything worked. Yeah, fine. The images are actually in that array and can be pulled to that UI image view. And we add additional 3000 images, do another snapshot, no leak. So what's going on here? Is Xcode broken or do we do anything wrong? Well, let's stop instruments for a second and get rid of it and switch back to code. What you usually do, and I highly recommend to always do that before you ship a project, run the analyze comment. 
And um, interestingly enough, Xcode's uh, static code analysis does indicate a leak. So it clearly points out that in line 39 we do allocate an object which returns an object with a plus one retain count, which is an owning reference, and which we do not release. So Xcode's analyze comment predicts a potential leak. And this is important to understand. Um, the analyze comment usually points out possible leaks. It's correct in many cases, but not always. There are situations where instruments just can't see that you're releasing an object later in your code. But here it's pretty easy to detect. It's a local scope inside that for loop, and we are not releasing an object which we have allocated and in it. So um, why doesn't the instrument detect it? Well, turns out that instruments detects a leak, well, the leaks instrument in instruments, and this sounds weird, but that's uh, the correct way to, to say it. The leaks instrument does recognize a leak when actually there's no reference anymore to an object, when the reference count reaches zero. And in our little project here, that never happens. The reason for that is, as I said, when we do self-images add object, the NS mutable array retains the temporary object. So it has an owning reference to that object. And um, that never gets released. The reason for that being that this view controller, in fact, is the one and only view controller of our application. So it kind of never goes away. When we quit that application, that's when the view controller gets freed, but as long as the application runs, it's never freed, which means that we never reach the alloc and we never actually release the NS mutable array, which means that we, during the entire lifetime of this application, so to speak, we kind of hold references and a retain count of one to our temporarily created objects. And this is not a problem in this specific situation, but it might become a problem when we expand that application. Um, so um, it is important to understand that actually we do have leaking code here. It's just we are not leaking, in fact, in this specific scenario. So um, let's, let's try to simulate what would happen in a real-world application. And um, to do, in order to do that, we add a third button here. So you have the pleasure to see me code a bit. We add a third button and we call that nil z array. And from that very convenient speaking name, you might already guess what I'm going to do. In our view controller, we add um, an additional action. And in that action, all we do is we do a self images equals nil. And um, because we are doing self.images, that means we are invoking the setter. The setter is synthesized here on top. As I said before, images is a retained property on the view controller. So effectively, self.images equals nil will release the existing images and as mutable array on the view controller. And when it does that, we lose all the references. In that exact moment, we lose all the references to all our local image objects. So now they have a reference count of zero. And that is what enables the leaks instrument to detect the leak. So um, let's check that. We um, copy over that method to the interface definition. And as a final step, in Interface Builder, we take this nil the array action and connect it to the touch up inside event of that button. We save everything and should be good to go. Fire up Xcodes and the simulator again. Well, that was instruments. Here we go. It's running. Same scenario as before. Application is running. We see some initial alloc allocation going on. We add 100 images, and that is where our code leaks. Still, nothing in the leaks instrument. Nothing has changed. Add additional 2,000. Well, 1,000 images have a total of 2,000 now. 
You can also show one of those images. Fine. Still, nothing leaks. Now we nil the array, which means we release the existing NS mutable array. That is when our locally created 2000 objects have a reference count of zero. That is what will enable leaks to detect the leak. Let's see. In four seconds, we hit a new snapshot. And sure enough, this time leaks was able to detect the leak. Yippee. Let's um, stop the recording here for a second. So we clearly see now we've got a huge memory leak. And actually leaks tells us it's um, a UI image which is leaking, which is correct. And if we pull up the um, call stack here, we actually see that it is leaking, that we do see the message. Well, first of all, we see all the images here, which are now still in memory, but we don't have any valid reference anymore. And um, sure enough, if we double click in the call stack here, we also see the exact code line where that leak is created. And we do see that 100% of those objects are in fact leaking, which is um, correct. So I hope this um, was valuable for you. I thank the great folks over in the Facebook iOS developers group for discussing this with me and um, I hope you follow along. If you want to get in touch, I'm at 24z at um, Twitter and I look forward to all of your feedback. Thanks.